Hello? This is a review or overview of gas calculations. By this time, you should have uh, obtained this uh, file or printed it out. This handout is used to uh, guide you in calculating gas problems. <clears throat> Gases can be defined with four variables volume, temperature, N, which is the number of moles, i.e., number of particles, and P, the pressure. As you um, heard or as you experienced in a previous video on the behaviors of gas particles, <clears throat> gas, um, gas calculations are based on the uh, kinetic molecular theory, um, which, when you deal with gases, is called the kinetic theory of gases. And um, for the first year student, we um, assume the ideal gas condition. Um, we do not deal with gases that are in the real gas condition. Again, all gases are both ideal and real. It's just what conditions, temperature and pressure, make them that way. And as a summary, um, if the pot gas particles are really close to each other, then the ideal gas condition cannot exist. It's only when uh, the gas particles are basically very far away from each other can the, uh, will the ideal gas condition apply. And we like to use it first year because it is easier mathematically than the real gas. So as, um, as, <clears throat> as we were talking about in, in a pre previous video on gas behavior, um, a way in which, uh, of looking at gas in the gas calculations is thinking of a room. And there are people in the room, and those people are gas particles. And as, <clears throat> as you had talked about before, gas particles uh, basically go in a straight line until they hit or have an collision with the wall, and they bounce off, losing no energy. And that hitting of the wall is considered uh, a part of pressure. So the number of hits on the wall is pressure. Um, in the analogy I just said, um, N, which is the number of uh, particles, that's the number of people who are walking. T is how, how fast they walk, i.e. the cadence in which they walk. And V, the volume, is how big the room is. So <clears throat> what happens is... Um, with gas calculations, two general um, conditions or two general occurrences happen. One is when we do something to the gas, i.e. the gas container. We're in expanding it, we're heating it up, we're cooling it down, it's leaking um, particles. And when you have that situation, there's actually, um, I call it a two-condition uh, problem. What you have is you have the initial uh, condition where you have the four parameters, and then you do something to the, um, the gas, i.e., usually you can tell because it's the action verb, cool, for example. So therefore, now what you have is you have the, um, the gas at a different condition, and there's four variables for that, too. And that's what the one and two subscripts mean. Now, <clears throat> with two condition problems, there are several different types. But in general, there's two major types. Since you have four parameters, you can keep two constant and two vary. And those are what we call the three gas laws in Avogadro's hypothesis. And in general, that's the one you usually start with when you teach gas laws. So <clears throat> I listed what they are. Um, as you can see, there's always two things being held constant. For example, in Boyle's law, it's at constant temperature and, and um, number of moles. Pressure and volume vary. Now, do, how do they vary? Uh, well, it's either directly or inversely, and you'll learn about that. Then you have Charles's law that keeps pressure and number of moles constant and varies 
temperature and um, number in the volume. Uh, Gala Sachs, which I used to call no name, uh, that you keep the number of moles in volume constant and you change the pressure and temperature. And the uh, other one is Avogadro's hypothesis, which is um, <clears throat> pressure and temperature being held constant and you're changing the number of moles and the volume changes. So those are all, um, all <clears throat> equations that you're going to use when you have changes or you do something to the bloom. We have two, basically two conditions, a starting condition and a final condition. And you're holding two things constant and therefore two things change. The other major way of doing it is actually only holding one thing constant and having three possible things change. That's called the combined gas law. And in the on the combined gas law, with the combined gas law, the one thing that's always held constant is number of moles. So therefore, what you have here is unlike um, the equations above, where <clears throat> you have um, you're varying um, two things, so you have four th uh, four parameters in the equation. They give you three, and you're looking for one. Here, what you have is you actually have six. And you're, you can vary two things while finding out the other thing, which requires six things. So you have to be given five to find the six. That's the easiest way of figuring out if you're doing the combined gas law or one of the other uh, gas laws slash Avogadro hypothesis. <coughs> So those are all for two condition problems. And again, the way in which you usually figure out is you can, you can see action verbs. The other possibility is where you don't see action verbs and you're not doing anything to the balloon, you're just des describing the gas itself. And that's, when that occurs, you always use the, use the ideal gas law. PV is equal to NRT. R is actually called the ideal gas constant, and the ideal constant is a constant, and for us, we will use the constant value 0 0.0821 liters times atmosphere over moles times K. There are other ones that you can use, but this is the one we're going to use. And since it's a constant, you change all the other variables in your equation into the units of the constant so you don't change the constant. <clears throat> now, after that, there are other um, occurrences or, or things you can do um, with gases. One is, um, up until now, I've been talking about um, calculations where it's just one gas. Well, there's actually, you can deal with mixtures of gases. With that, it's called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. And <clears throat> you must ha uh, be in an ideal gas condition to use Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure because the one of the assumptions of the ideal gas, uh, ideal gas condition is that <clears throat> every particle thinks it's by itself, so it takes the volume of the container even if there's multiple types of gases. So <clears throat> what happens is, for Dalton's law, the total pressure of the gas mixture is equal to the summation, and that's what that little squiggly line means, of the partial pressure of each gas. And how do you find the partial pressure of each gas? Is you use a ideal gas law. And in that one, <clears throat> what happens is, every gas thinks it's the uh, only con gas in the container, so it takes the volume, the total volume. And, of course, temperatures in the mixture are all the same temperature, so T doesn't change. So really only to find the partial pressure, you, you're worrying about the number of moles of the gas particle. Um, <clears throat> you also can um, find the density of a gas. Again, the density of the gas questions, um, you don't do anything to the gas itself. It's just a way of classifying the gas itself. So again, you, it's a one condition problem. You use the ideal gas law. And you do this, you do some mathematics. Um, <clears throat> and what you get was, is the density of the gas is um, equal to the pressure over RT times molar mass. MW stands for molar mass. So you can find the density of any gas if you have that information. 
Then the other one is uh, gr called Graham's Law of Diffusion, which is also what is called effusion. And again, that's uh, based on um, a just a gas. You're not doing to any of the gas. What you're doing is you're letting two gases diffuse or effuse through an area. And the, uh, and the, the definition of Graham's Law of Diffusion is <clears throat> the relative rate of diffusion of A to B is equal to the square root of the inverse of the molar masses of the gases. And that's why, if you look, it's inverted. That's why the molar mass of B is on the top of the fraction in the, uh, in the square root sign, and A is on the bottom. Okay? Uh, there, is a, uh, there is a less mathematical way and, and totally inappropriate and totally uh, um, not politically correct way of thinking about Graham's Law. And it goes like, um, fat things go slow, skinny things go fast. In essence, fat being high molecular weight uh, gases travels diffused slowly, as in distance per time, whereas low molecular weight things diffuse faster, meaning more distance in a given amount of time. Okay. And then the last one where you just use um, the ideal gas um, law as in you're not doing anything to the, um, the gas is, is that you can uh, actually generate gas as a chemical in a chemical reaction. So there what you're doing is um, you're basically collecting the gas um, in, um, when you produce it in a chemical reaction. So you get, you're going to do basically a stoichiometry to gas law problem. And in the link is the number of moles of the gas. Or the other way around. You have a gas and you're reacting it to make a chemical reaction, and you want to know how much of something else is. So again, that is just uh, you get the gas law and you find out how many moles of the gas you have, and that's going to be like the starting point of your stoichiometry, and you finish with the stoichiometry. Okay? So in that case, the gas col uh, uh, generation is just. Um, Stoichiometry and the gas laws coming together in the, the uh, bridge is the number of moles of the gas. Now, for that one, I'll just quickly talk about if you um, if you collect the gas under the under water, as in uh, you generate the gas and then you um, displace the water with the gas to collect it, then you have a little problem because the gas in the in the uh, in the or the material in the gas phase above the liquid, uh, where you're collecting the gas, is actually two things. It's the gas itself, but it's also the vapor of the liquid that's uh, there. Because as you know, um, if you have a liquid level with a gas phase above it, there's always liquid particles in that gas phase called vapor. So your pressures aren't just the pressure of the gas, it's now a Dalton's Law or pressure problem where you have both the pressure of the gas and the pressure of the vapor pressure of the liquid. If you don't collect it under the gas and uh, underwater, then if, let's say, you just use a balloon, then you don't have to worry about that. The pressure of the balloon is the pressure of the gas. And um, sometimes we're able to do what's called the molar volume of a gas lab, where you have to deal with this. But we'll discuss that in a different um, uh, video. So that's a general uh, explanation of the gas uh, calculations. Thank you.